once the controllers are powered on, we can wait for this to connect to the M300. Once this is done, the pilot symbol will light up in blue. We can then select the blue button, and here we have the option between manual flight and the mission flight. Manual flight is designed to fly completely manually, and mission is designed for mapping or other uses. Here we will select manual flight, and we will get a checklist confirming all the settings and that everything is up and running correctly. As you can see here, we're in GPS mode, and we have two views initially available. As you can see, the main screen is the FPV. This is the camera attached to the UAV. In the bottom right hand corner, we have the payload view as well. By clicking this, it will expand to full screen. Once clicking this, we can see we have several different settings available. On the left hand side, we have the overlay information. This includes the histogram and the settings currently applied to the camera. We can also see that camera ready and storage ready are both lit up green, meaning the camera is ready to capture. This also gives us information about ISO, aperture and shutter speed, which we can see in blue means that this is in automatic at the moment. Also below we have unsaved images set to zero as nothing is pending to be saved. And we also have space with the amount of images we can capture to the card. Finally, at the bottom, we have the focus distance. In the top, we have several buttons available. First of all, the plus minus. This will help us compensate when we're in auto exposure. As we can see, the auto exposure button is in blue, which means this is currently activated. The auto exposure will allow the camera to expose based on the last picture. By clicking the auto exposure button, we can turn this off and we see the settings go from blue to a normal grey colour to indicate that it is now in manual exposure. The small video camera button allows us to enable and disable the overlay settings. We can see here by tapping it, it will remove and add this into the image. The small eye button will disable and enable the focus peaking mode. We can also switch from autofocus to manual focus and when we select manual focus, you can see we get the option to manually focus the IXM. By dragging this up and down, we can go from infinity to our closest point here. We can also see in the top left hand side that we have the distance that the manual focus is currently on. With a combination of the manual focus distance and the focus peaking, this makes it easy to accurately focus the camera in manual focus. The small cog gives us direct access to the payload settings. Once we click this, it will open a side menu with more advanced settings in here. First of all, we have the display real-time data, which is currently enabled. By disabling this, the small floating window will disappear with the focus range in. Next, we have options for ISO, shutter speed and aperture which we can change accordingly depending on our desired exposure. As we change these, the live view will change accordingly to show the current exposure. Underneath we have exposure compensation, which whilst we're in manual mode has no effect. However, if you're using auto exposure mode, this can be helpful. We can also change the overlay transparency here. As we change the unit, we can see it become more transparent so we get a clearer view from what we are photographing on the IXM. We also have overlay preview with two different settings, both small and large. Large will take up the entire screen, where small will just show a smaller preview on the left hand side of the interface. We also have the preview time of the overlay, which will dictate how long the preview is shown before it disappears. Again, this is adjustable. We also have the focus peaking threshold, which again we can adjust. This will affect the sensitivity of the focus mask. There is also an option for mass storage. This is used on special setups when you're shooting directly to a hard drive. 
At the bottom here we have our gimbal adjustment. This should be fine as default, but again can be adjusted if needed. Finally at the bottom we have the option to completely reboot the gimbal. As default the control of the gimbal is on the main controller, however this can be transferred to a second controller if needed. Here we will split between the main controller and the second controller. Once the second controller takes control of the gimbal, all the overlay and information will be transferred onto the second controller screen. This means that the gimbal can be more easily operated by using the left stick of the second controller. At any time the gimbal control can be passed backwards and forwards between the first and second remote. All the settings we spoke about before can also be controlled from the second controller when in control of the gimbal. On the second controller you can also take over the UAV control. Simply click the FPV view and then in the top left hand corner you can take control of the UAV from here. All of the operations shown here can be performed in the air as well.